the Bible to the cross from the cross. Every Bible story has three components. First, God's law. Second, God's compassion. Third, God's miracle. Opening your Bible opens miracles. The Bible as one story is holy enough in our lives. Day 67, Deuteronomy 27 to 28. Blessing and curse depending on the ark. When the people of Israel declared the words of blessing and curse on Mount Ebal and Mount Gerizim, they were given the opportunity to receive a blessing following obedience. First point. The first thing the Israelites were to do when they entered Canaan was to offer thanks offering on Mount Ebal. The first thing the Israelites were to do after they entered Canaan was to offer thanks offering on Mount Ebal. They were to set up large stones and coat them with plaster. They were to then write on them all the words of the laws of God. The people were also commanded to offer burnt offering and fellowship offering. The fellowship offering in particular was to be shared. The meat of their fellowship offering of thanksgiving must be eaten on the day it is offered. They must leave none of it till morning. God commanded this through Moses, and these commands became implemented in Joshua chapter 8. Second point. After entering Canaan, the people had to swear that they would obey God on Mount Gerizim and would not disobey God on Mount Ebal. God divided the twelve tribes into half. Six tribes were blessed on Mount Gerizim, and six tribes were warned of the curse on Mount Ebal. At this, the nation replied with Amen. To the warnings of the twelve curses, the nation replied all twelve times with Amen. Amen meant we are sure, and also meant we will do so. As such, God told the manna generation of both the blessing and the curse. Third point. Leviticus chapter 26 and Deuteronomy chapter 28 tells of the long future for a kingdom of priests. Leviticus chapter 26 covered the contents on Mount Sinai and how God told the Exodus generation about the long future for a kingdom of priests, including both the blessing and the curse. In Deuteronomy chapter 28, God once again spoke of this, but this time to the Mana generation. The Exodus generation unfortunately refused to obey and therefore were unable to receive God's blessing. But 40 years later, the Mana generation listened and obeyed God. Whether they became blessed or cursed now depended on whether they obeyed or disobeyed afterwards. Fourth point, the long future for a kingdom of priests promised blessings if the people obeyed God. Forty years ago, God told the Exodus generation of the blessings. The individuals would receive on the condition that they obeyed God's commands, and this is recorded in Leviticus chapter 26. But now, in Deuteronomy chapter 28, God told the Mana generation that God blessed them even further than the contents of Leviticus chapter 26. God had told the Exodus generation in Leviticus chapter 26 of the blessings they would receive as a nation if they obeyed God's commands. God, to the Mana generation, expanded on this and told them that He would increase their blessing. God, who was so keen to bless His people, said through Moses that 
He would bless the Mana generation more than their parent generation. Fifth point, God told the people of the punishment they would receive if they disobeyed God's command. To the Exodus generation 40 years ago, God told them of the consequences as individuals if they failed to obey God's commands. This is also recorded in Leviticus chapter 26. To the Mana generation 40 years later, God told them that if they did not obey God's commands, their punishment would be more severe than it was for their parents' generation. God also told the Exodus generation of the punishment they would receive as a nation if they disobeyed him. God, 40 years later, then told the Mana generation of the bigger punishment they would receive if they disobeyed God. The consequences for them as a nation was to be the following. They would lose wars with other nations. Their children will be taken as captives, and they would have to live in a foreign land all scattered. God, as such, foretold them of the blessings and curse, all depending on their obedience and disobedience. I am thrilled that you have downloaded the Tondoc app. The Tondoc app is not like any other app in the world today as well as in the body of Christ today. Dr. Biyongo Zhou has devoted his entire life to teaching men and women like yourself to understand the entirety of the Word of God as a masterful and beautiful story from Genesis to Revelation. Dr. Zhou is a sought after speaker worldwide. He's a cutting edge pastor and leader. He is a renowned theologian and a prolific writer. And you're going to be equipped and energized like never before to understand and apply the Word of God into your life. Again, thank you for downloading the Tondoc app.